Hello and welcome to another part of online multiplayer third person shooter. So in this video we're gonna perfecting our aim and add the reloading system. So in the first video we installed the animation rigging package and we're gonna use that to make our character look at the aim position. So first I'm gonna go to the scripts and create a new script and name it rig manager. Now let's open this and clear that so we need to add the namespace of unity engine animations rigging and we need to create a few variables the first one is going to be multi aim constraint and i'm going to name it right hand and the other one is for the left hand it's going to be two bone ik constraint and another one would be body which is going to be multi aim constraint so we're going to use the right hand to make it look towards the target and because the weapon is a child of the right hand then the weapon is going to be looking at the target i'm going to use the left hand to put it on the weapon grip and of course we're going to use the body to look at the target also i am going to create a transform name it aim target so let's go to the editor here we go and to start i'm going to select the character in the animation rigging i'm going to say rig setup so when you do that a component is going to be attached to your character it's going to be a rig builder so that is our rig now i'm going to rename it to just rig and also let's attach our rig manager so here it is rig manager i'm just going to attach it right here let's create these variables for the right hand let's go to the rig create an empty game object this is going to be right hand and let's duplicate this this is going to be left hand and we need another one for the body let's just start with the right hand i am going to attach a multi-aim constraint so let's do that so the constrained object is going to be right hand so let's go ahead and expand the skeleton and find the right hand of our character it should be here under the right shoulder that's it that's our right hand so i'm gonna assign that and for the source object we need a target so let's go ahead and create another empty game object here and just name it target so if i go to the right hand i'm gonna use target so we also need to assign the values of forward and up axis of our right hand so if i select the right hand and go to the scene here if I go to the local, you see that the forward of my right hand is this green arrow, but reversed. So this is Y, so the forward is going to be minus Y. So let's do that. Aim axis is going to be minus Y. And if I select the right hand again, the up axis is going to be the blue one, but it's also going to be reversed. So that is Z, and that is going to be minus Z so let's select minus z by the way these values are going to be different for different characters now for the body i'm going to also attach a multi-aim constraint and for the body let's do the chest i'm going to rotate the chest towards the target and for the source object we're also going to assign the target so both chest and right hand are going to be looking at this target we're going to set the position of this target in the scripts for the body we chose chest and if i take a look at the chest the forward is going to be z and the up is going to be y so z and y so i don't need to change that now for the left hand i'm going to attach two bone ik strength so for the tip i'm going to choose the left hand so let's do that here is the right shoulder so we're gonna go to the left shoulder and the hand is gonna be the tip and i can just simply right click here and choose auto setup from tip so it's gonna automatically assign those values so we don't need to change any settings but there's two transforms has been created here automatically i'm just going to select both of them and drag them under the right hand here now we have right hand left hand and body 
So the order of these constraints are important. So we need to do the body first. So I'm going to drag it up there and then we're going to do the right hand and then we're going to do the left hand. This order is important because if you change the order, it's going to mess things up and we're not going to get the expected behavior. So first we're going to rotate the body towards the target. After that, we're going to rotate the right hand and after that we're going to place the left hand. Now let's go and select our player and assign the values here in the rig manager. That's our body. And uh, this is our right hand. Let's assign the left hand as well. And finally, aim target is going to be target. Now, let's go back to the rig manager. I'm going to change the position of this aim target. So the right hand and body could look at it. So this is private. I'm going to do it by creating a setter for it. I'm going to say public vector three aim target. And when I set the value of this aim target, it's going to put that inside the aim target dot position. Now I'm going to create a variable to assign the weight of the left hand. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called left hand weight. So when you set the left hand weight, it's going to put that value inside left hand dot weight variable. And now let's create another variable to assign the weight of right hand and body because both of them are looking at the same target. So we're going to do it in one variable, call it aim weight. And when we set this, it's going to put that value inside right hand weight and body weight. So that's it for our rig manager. Now let's go to our third person controller. So the first thing we need is a reference to the rig manager. So up here, I am going to create a private rig manager and name it rig manager. Let's get down here in the awake function. We could just get the rig manager by using get component. Now we need two variables to hold the weight for right hand body and left hand. So let's go ahead and create it. I'm going to do it right here. One of them is going to be aim rig weight. So that's for the right hand and the body. And this is going to be left hand weight. Now, first, let's assign aim rig weight. So let's go to the update function. And here, when we get our inputs after that, we are going to do it. Let's say do it here. I'm going to say aim rig weight equals to mathf.lerp. And we're going to lerp from itself. And we're going to do it based on if we are aiming and if we are not reloading in that case we're going to put a question mark we're going to assign one otherwise we're going to assign zero and we're going to do it let's just say 10 for the speed multiplied by time dot delta time and the same way for the left hand weight we're going to lerp it from itself so we need two conditions for this so let's put one in the parentheses and use and so the second condition is if we are not reloading and for the first condition, we're going to say if we are aiming or our character is grounded. So basically we're saying if we are reloading, release the left hand because the left hand is going to be moving to grab the magazine and stuff like that to do the reloading. And also in order to hold the grip with the left hand, we should be either aiming or we should be on the ground because we don't want to hold the weapon grip when we are falling and we're not aiming. And for the rest of it, we're going to add the question mark. We're going to put one if this condition is true. And we're going to put zero if it's not. And that is the speed. Let's just do 10 multiplied by time dot delta time. So now let's start assigning the values for the rig manager variables. So the first one, we're going to say rig manager dot aim target. It's going to be equal to camera manager dot singleton dot aim target point. Now the next variable is going to be aim weight, which is going to be equal to aim rig weight, which we calculated right here. And the next one is going to be left hand weight 
which is going to be left hand weight. Now if I save this, okay now let's go to the Unity editor and let's select our player and I'm gonna check the armed boolean. So if I play this, well I get an error, let's see what it is. So if I go to my weapon holder and my weapon, here if I expand this, basically my weapon name is exactly the same name as one of its children. So for some reason this is causing an error. So I could just rename this to something else. Let's just say B. So now these two have different names. Now before we start the game, let's go to the game and choose focused. Now if I play this, so you see that left hand is not placed correctly. So if I go to the scene and here under the right hand, here is my weapon holder. And if you remember, we placed the two transforms that were created automatically here under the right hand. So if I move this, right hand is going to move with it. So I'm going to place this somewhere that looks like it's holding the weapon. So let's bring it somewhere here. And we can also rotate it. So let's do that. And let's bring it somewhere around here. So I think this is good. So now I'm not going to stop the game. I'm just going to copy the component. And here I am going to paste the component values. Now if I play this again, the hand is on the correct place. Now this is our moving animation. I can jump. As you can see, when I'm not grounded, the left hand is going to leave the weapon grip and gives us a good look. Now if I aim, the weapon is looking exactly at the target point. And also the body is going to be looking at the target point. Now the left elbow is a little bit off, so let's fix that too. I'm going to go to the left hand hint under the right hand and now if I play the game I can adjust the left hand hint let's go to the scene and uh, I'm gonna bring it right here it's basically going to change the left elbow position if I bring it somewhere right here I think this is look good now let's go and save the component values and now we can just paste them using paste component values. Okay, let's save the scene and go maximized. Now if I play this, now it looks a lot better. We can aim and we can jump. Here you go. It works just fine. We can even walk and this is it. Now as you can see when we aim the body is not exactly looking at the target so there is a fix for that let me stop this if we go to the body here you see that there is an offset that we could use so I'm gonna put this on focused and let's bring the scene right here so that's it now we have a better look at the situation now when I aim this is how it looks which we can give it a little offset. Let's change the X first. Let's see if it's the correct axis. Now, if we do this, nope, this is not the correct axis. We need to change Y, I think. Let's do it. Something like 24 or five. And if I aim now, it's a little bit better. Let's increase it a little bit more let's say 30 and now it's on the shoulder so I think this is good so let's stop this and put the Y on 35 and now if I play this maximized and you see that we can aim and it's gonna aim exactly at the target position we can also jump when we are aiming so this is actually pretty cool that's it it's gonna release the weapon grip when we are on the air 
but when we are aiming it's gonna stick with the weapon grip so let's also do the reloading so reload is gonna be easy let's go to the animator in the second layer the layer we have our aiming we can put our reload animation here I have a reloading animation here I'm gonna put it here and in the parameters let's create a trigger and name it reload so here when we are triggering that reload in the conditions let's add it this is it reload and it does not have exit time so let's uncheck that and let's make a transition back here when this is over now first we're gonna set that trigger we're gonna do that in the third person controller we're gonna do it in the update function let's do it something like the walk I'm gonna copy that and let's do it here paste if input.reload we're gonna set the input.reload to false and instead of this I am going to say animator set trigger reload so this is also going to set the reloading to true and now we need a way to set the reloading back to false when the reloading is over so to do that let's create a function here reload finished so we need to call this function from somewhere let's say reloading equals to false so in order to call this reload finished function we need to go to the unity editor let's go to the script and here I am going to create a new script and I'm gonna name it reload state machine so we're gonna attach the reload state machine to our reloading state this is the reloading state and whenever it's gonna exit the state we're gonna call that function so let's open this script so it's not gonna drive from mono behavior it's gonna drive from state machine behavior so let's clear this and we're gonna override on state exit so let's override that so on state exit is gonna be called whenever the animation is gonna leave that state so it is passing us the animator so we can use that to get a reference of the third person controller we're gonna say animator game object get component third person controller and if the controller is not null we're gonna call controller dot reload finish which is this function here is gonna set the reloading to false so let's save that and now if I go to my unity here I can select my reloading animation and then add the behavior and choose reload state machine so that's the reload state machine I'm gonna attach that so now if I play the game and hit the reload button you see that it's gonna reload and that's it so we could even reload when we are aiming here it is it's gonna play the reload animation so while we are here I don't like this sensitivity when we are aiming so let's fix that let's go to the third person controller and here let's find camera rotation this is it this is camera rotation so our input look is here we could simply just multiply this by a sensitivity if we go to the camera manager I think we already created a variable for default sensitivity and aiming sensitivity now I'm going to create a sensitivity variable here it is public float sensitivity and when we get this we're gonna check if we are aiming and if we are we're gonna return the aiming sensitivity otherwise we're gonna return default sensitivity so we could use that to multiply it in our input look multiplied by camera manager dot singleton dot sensitivity and the same thing for our y that should take care of it we should now have different camera sensitivity when we are aiming and when we are not aiming so now if I play this I have one sensitivity now and when I aim I have a different sensitivity so this is it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you had any questions feel free to ask me also make sure to like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching